What's up, everybody? It's We Are Live. Hopefully you're joined right here with us. We're live in Grand Center in St. Louis at Midcoast Studio. Be sure to check out midcoast.media for more information. Uh, big shout out to the uh, the gnomes in the uh, in the, the stream taking over our microphones. And uh, I'm not even going to introduce the intern. I'm going to go straight to uh, the... <laughs> I'm going to go straight to... Uh, a new Jordan Peele film <laughs> being filmed in Brooklyn with Marvis Morell. Good morning, Travis. What's wrong? What the hell is that supposed to mean? What, what's happening? <laughs> oh, what's going on? Oh, man. It looks like you've been given some kind of a pill that lets you see inside white people's heads. That's what's happening? <laughs> I don't need a pill for that, Chris. I just opened okay. the newspaper. Yeah, that's right. Uh, Travis Trell joining us from New York. Tommy, the intern's here. That's Tommy Mosslander. The great Chris Gardner is here. We can put all the blame for the uh, original stream issues from today on the show, or we could have just glossed over it and no one would have ever known, but I'm going to make a thing about it. Yeah, that's fine. Five people <laughs> watching. So. Yeah, we'll survive. We'll reset the entire system. So. Yeah. That's, isn't that a blast with technology? Like, we literally have a media company. We've got all this great stuff. Everything's set up perfect for it to be turnkey. You, you work hard. Everybody works hard. And then you show up and... Right when you start, the mics go off. Well, I'm, and, uh, I'm looking and there's at no, it. there's no good explanation. I'm looking at it, and I'm like, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Everything that I would normally check seems to be okay. It shows l we, like we could hear it on the stream, mm -hmm. and I'm like, yeah, there's no levels here, so I got nothing. Hi. Let's reset it and it's see what. It's a tough it, one. It's like just you know hitting it. Uh, Danny in the comments has a question right out of the gate. Is Travis in a police lineup? That's exactly <laughs> what I was laughing. Travis, had, I don't, I don't Travis had a face that looked like him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was him, officer. I didn't want to say it because I didn't want to get called racist this early in the morning. But yeah. Yeah. Well, well I, I, have a new, I have a new iPad stand. Oh. And so, because I think the angles that I was using previously... Uh, you were seeing straight up my nostrils and inside my esophagus. I loved yeah. it. So I figured that you guys would want a different angle. And yeah, now that I look at it, <laughs> it does look very prison-y. No, this is way better. It's like one of those truth commercials. Just put a flag behind you. If we could get one of those. Yeah, I um, know. I'm trying to see if there's anything I can put behind me right now, but I don't have anything. If we could get one I'll of those. I'll come up with something cool. I have a, a, a We Are Live banner if you want it. I could send it to you. But yeah, I mean. Somehow you I think you'll you trade it. send that, I think, ah. May 6th. So well, I, figured you'd I haven't received an address. or We don't even know if you're coming back here yet. So who knows I mean, if we can get the banner you, back. I don't even know if you have the flag, if you're just making it up. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen the flag. I pull, That's fair. That's I, fair. I'm going to say I haven't seen the flag either. Uh, fair you foul, seen the flag, Huh? I have not. you seen the We Are Live flag? No. It's literally the banner we if use. I, if I text October John Beebe, Beebe, would he know where the flag is? Uh, yeah. He's probably in Tuscany right yeah, now or that's something. that's how that works. Oh, lucky him. <laughs> can we get, um, yeah. can we just get, like, you know, the measurements to let you know how tall you are? Yeah, can we just get that on the wall behind you? That would be nice. <laughs> that's him, officer. Hey, I thought it was fireworks Travis, at first. You don't have to. Look, trust me. I've been in that situation before. I have plenty of mug shots. Mm, 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 I believe you. Oh, yeah. I think we can have a mug shot off, Gardner. I'll, I'll talk to my attorney not, and say, hey, what, what do I have those. to do to get a, my hands on them mug shots? Because I would like to see. I think it's fairly easy. How low I was. I think it's sunshine law should allow you. Public records law should allow yeah. you to get access to them. Because okay. I, I want to see how low I looked, at least. Because yesterday. Low, like where you were in your life or low in height? Uh, well, in life, I've been pretty consistent at five, eleven and a half now for a while. Good for you. Uh, Were you ever six foot? No. No. I wish my life. Did you tell people you're six foot? No, I could not do that. Look at you. I'm, I have Irish heritage and I was raised Catholic. The guilt would not allow me to do so. It's yeah. rather valiant of you. That's um, good. and so look, if I were six foot tall, I wouldn't be here right now. My no. life would be completely different. I agree. And I've always said that, but. I can't be a phony about it either. Mm -mm. You you don't get to do that. You don't get to be a phony about stuff like that. Tommy, you lie about your height? Oh, yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. 
I tell people I'm. Did we, uh, did, I'm sorry. Are we interrupting you? No. Did we? <laughs> our mistake. <laughs> our, our mistake. You know, people, Chris. Listen, Mac this kid. Chris. The kid puts good work in. He writes great write-ups. We give him the mic, <laughs> which is actually a pretty big fucking thing, considering yeah. he wants to be a comic and he's coming up on this. And we put. And as I told him yesterday, look at it as a bonus. Look is, at it as a bonus. He is an unpaid intern, so let's get all that out of the way. <laughs> the issue is, <laughs> if you get the mic. Pay attention. I was paying attention. If you're not on your phone, no. you're pouting. No. If you're no, not no, pouting, no, no, no. you're demanding. It's listen. all about you. Yes. Let's break it down. All right. Listen. I, I have You're white about. Travis Terrell. Yes. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> and he was Travis Terrell. No That's wonder, all no wonder you guys yeah. argue so yeah. much. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a second. Wait a second. This makes so much sense. This is the reverse. Uh, what the heck's the movie? Uh, what, what was the... Oh, I'm not even gonna do it. Airbud. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's always the answer. That's always. I, here's the what answer. I want to know. We're doing a movie thing later, so. What's that? Tommy, can we log? Does your Pokemon Go game? Okay. Do we I have like to talk? Hold Pokemon? on. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> does it keep track of how how long you've been playing and at what time? I think. I okay. think it does. Oh, it'll like a I screen like, tracker. I would like keeps to know track of what time I catch the Pokemon between at. eight and ten a.m. I want to know. I'm catching them all the time. I want to get my hands on that look. That but, log. But like that wasn't what I was doing. I was sending a message. I'll be right oh. back, guys. I want to oh. get a better background shot. I'm upset. No, the prison oh. thing got to me. Here <laughs> comes <laughs> no, 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 no. Here comes <laughs> Vanity Terrell. Look what we've done. Oh my god. All right, god. we'll see you in a bit, Black yeah. Tommy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Bye, buddy. I wonder if you can still hear us. So this is reverse get out, I'm realizing. Travis is the old black man trying to get into the privileged body <laughs> of a younger white man. Do you think that could be a, a Don't scenario? Don't call we're his body at? privileged. Oh, okay. <laughs> Tommy's only, dealt with some yeah. stuff. There's only That's one fair. thing privileged about this body. Don't, don't, don't. My brain. Oh, oh okay. man. Oh, well, that is well, something. That's a tough one. That, uh, that can be very sexy. You oh, know, Tommy? yeah. Just, uh, you know. Yeah. Tommy, thank you. <laughs> Why was your body so hot? Mm -hmm. mm. You proud it's, of that? Like it's even still hot. You, like you get you get two hours <laughs> of mic time every morning. And then, like, a drop, even just having your own drop used to be a big deal. And he just comes in and yeah. takes over. Yeah, and that's fine. I'm like a comedic genius, guys. Mm. You are something. Yeah, but uh, you don't get to decide that. No, no, he doesn't. Yeah, my mom like did it for me. giving yourself a yeah, nickname. Nice. No, yeah, did, right. I tried well, doing that in high school. We've tried this, too. We've tried Tommy Pebbles. Tommy Pebbles. What's goes. his other nickname? I, in high school, I tried to give myself. Jokemon. Uh, in mm. high school, I tried to give myself the nickname Snickers. Uh, That's right. Was, that didn't catch on. Yesterday in the car when we were riding along, he tried oh. to give himself the nickname Tasty Cakes, I think. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> I did that, too. <laughs> I kind of like Tasty Cakes, though. I mean, that's pretty good. I yeah. was driving, and, like, sometimes... Isn't I, that dangerous? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, I have a video. Sometimes I get thoughts in my head that I just have to say out loud, even when I'm alone. And one of them yesterday is I, I was driving, and I went, you know, you guys can call me Tasty Cakes. Mm-hmm. And and I was just sitting in the car next to him, mm. and I just kind of looked over, and I'm like, "What? What? <laughs> what was that? Who? Are, who are you talking to?" It was. It was kind of quiet too. Yes, it like, was. We had been talking, but it like the conversation had stopped, and then I, I did that. You saw a truck or something? I think. Did you see no, a truck? No, I saw the donut bag in the back of my car. Okay. I remember I had the donuts. In the back of my car, I knew they were tasty cake. I was like, "That'd be a cool nickname," so I said it. Yeah, you did. Right in front of me. What would your snack name be? Ooh, pizza roll. Oh, mm. damn. No. I don't know. I kind of like that. Hey, Ding what's dong. up, pizza roll? Pizza roll! Don't be burning the roof of my yeah. mouth. Ding dong's been used. I don't know anyone wow. named pizza roll. Yeah, that's true. Hey, what, man, what pizza would, roll. What would yours be? Mm, oh, man. Hot Un pocket? Uncrustable. Hot pocket? Hot no. pocket. Mm, 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 mm. mm, -mm. What's mm. up, Hot Pocket? What's up, Whipped Cream? What's up, Whip? What's up, Ready Whip? <laughs> yeah, I like Ready, ready whip. whip. Yeah, I like Ready Whip. What's up, Non Sugar? <laughs> hey, yo, like organic. What up, throat. ketosis? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, get oh, your yeah. keto ass over here. So we got tasty cakes, ketosis. pizza roll. <laughs> <laughs> we going ketosis. I'm go you gotta that say the sounds, full thing. My name is not keto. Like, I'll get real upset about it. Someone told My mother named me ketosis. Yeah, if you're named ketosis, I'm wondering what medication you take for that. Mm. Mm. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, if Salt you're, pills. If you're... <laughs> If you're having a good time. Not sugar, that's for damn sure. Be sure to uh, share the stream this morning. We're going to have our friend J.C. Sabala join in the second hour. We're going to have a lot of fun. Big thanks to Tech Electronics. Uh, are we? Do we think Travis just had an appointment that he, he had to go to and he's lying, saying he didn't love his background? Ah, oh, shit. Is that he, what's he happening He forgot here? about his talent meeting. Oh, uh, yeah, there it is. Actually, <laughs> to, to acquire some. I think I'm able to do this right now. I want to show you this real quick. Uh, there's Trav. Never mind. Oh, he's back. No, do it anyway. Uh, I, I did get a screen grab. Oh, we uh, didn't do face off. We'll do we? that later on no. this hour. Mm. Uh, I did get a screen grab, though, while as soon as we came on, because I noticed it right away, and it is simply that one right there does not. <laughs> 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 it's even the face. Oh, man. That's like, I've done something wrong, and I belong here, and I'm just trying to think of who I need to call to get out of here. Oh. Hey. That's fair. Sorry, Trav, but it was right. I took it immediately as soon as we popped on because it, it was in my head right away. Travis, if you had a nickname that was named after a snack, what would it be? A nickname named after a snack? Yeah. Or a food. We'll go like, food or food related. Okay, anything. he's pizza roll. I'm tasty cakes. This is ketosis. <laughs> Ketosis. We went with a diet for him. <laughs> <He's> a, <laughs> yeah, we yeah. didn't know. You gotta keep those boat loops. Down. We didn't know if Ready Whip would be a good one or uh, or non sugar. I feel like because I'm shaped like one, I feel like my nickname would be Capri Sun. I like it. I like it. Capri Sun's good. Hey, Capri Sun and Ketosis in the morning. What's up, everybody? Oh, but instead of like, come on, son, it'd be, come on, Capri Sun. Yeah. And so that's going to yeah. work real well. So you're That's a very good one. Uh, here, we'll throw it to Capri Sun in Brooklyn, New York. Hello, Capri Sun. Did you just say Capri Sun? Hey, hey, what's up, bro? This is a beautiful day here in the greatest city in America. This is Capri Sun. I'll see you at noon. Back to Katosis here in St. Louis. Just what's up, to everybody? MTV VJ. <laughs> we did, yeah. Hey, really, uh, I feel like, yeah, if your name is so Capri wait, Sun, now we got to throw. I can't oh, yeah. wait for spring break in the house. Oh, Can we've you... got we've got Dill Bellamy in New York. <laughs> Ham Was Cortez. Was it ever a dream of anyone else's? Tommy's too young to know, but I, I always. I, I thought the MTV VJ jobs was the coolest job in, in uh, the world. I yeah, I wanted to do that because when I was reading about comedy growing up, it was like Pauly Shore and Chris Hardwick and all those guys. They were all VJs or talk show hosts in the nineties. I'm like, that'd be so fucking cool. But now mm -hmm. it doesn't exist. So. Let me tell you what. Uh, if you had any doubt before, uh, a young Bill Bellamy, six foot two and a half of him, sat in that chair at 54 years old, looking better than all of us. Let me tell you something. If you had any question of what was happening in those beach houses with those VJs running around in the 90s, that confirmed it. That guy was turning women's heads in this damn building the all entire way through, and he's 54 years old. I can only imagine the horrors. Him, Pauly Shore, Anyone else, Carson Daly, mm -hmm. what they <laughs> accomplished in Panama City Beach during MTV Spring Break, I don't even want to talk about it because I think who's I have to the, pay a premium. Who's the author, who's the author who's done the uh, bestsellers on CAA Behind, and SNL and ESPN? We've interviewed him. Like uh, Jim yeah, it Miller, I think. Jim Miller? I think something along those lines. James but Miller or Jim Miller? One. He definitely needs to do one on the early VJ TRL days because that was the height of it all as far as that was pop culture in an immediate bubble. And yet Bill Bellamy, gosh, he was one of maybe two or three black personalities on MTV. So I can only imagine what was thrown his way when he mm -hmm. went to spring break in Texas and Florida and SoCal and Panama City Beach. Like it, that had to be an insane South time. Padre, we need Iowa. that book right now. James Andrew Miller is the author and friend of the show. Okay. We'll call. <laughs> Can you say Capri Sun again? Capri Sun? That's not right. Capri Sun. Capri Sun. It's two it's, separate words. Yeah, it's not, you, you make it sound like one. That's interesting. Oh, it is two Why words. Why are you saying it with one word? Are you having a stroke? <laughs> <laughs> say it again. Capri Sun. Capri Sun. Why are you doing that? Stop ah. it. A Capri Sun. <laughs> it sounds so Capri elitist. Sun. It sounds elitist. Capri Sun. It does. Well, do you want to go by Capri Sun, or do you want to be Capri Sun? Capri Sun. Why are those it's the only two options? If hey. it's your name, you're Capri Sun. <laughs> hey, how's it going? Why are you Capri limiting me? Why does it have to be? It's like, Chris, I could either do it the hood way, or I can do it the stupid way. Why are those the two options Look. that you have? Or, That's life, bro. 
That's or, not, Capri Sun sounds like like a, an old white man trying to order one of those at like Bell Reeve Country Club or something. Oh, like yeah, just, Capri Sun. Capri Sun. Yeah. There's a third way to do it. Hey, what's up, Capri Sun? See, that doesn't sound stupid at all. No, it has Thank to you, sound Tommy. stupid if it's associated with Travis. That's a rule. Mm. Yes, that, that's fair. You don't know how to pronounce use. Use? Capri Sun. What? What? So, never mind. Yeah, that was going somewhere. <laughs> Two dogs chasing their own tail. Two dogs chasing one tail. There. So, yeah, so wh- your Capri Sun. There you go. Oh, yeah, I think so. Like, as far as, like, I got a pouch. Make uh, prayer, make prayer hands. Trav, make mm-hmm. no, prayer hands. Look, like, if you look at my frame, like, if you squeeze the middle of me, like, something's going <laughs> to shoot off from the top. <laughs> <laughs> Put, make so, prayer hands, Travis. Okay. Now say very slowly, Capri Sun, and then bow your head. Capri Sun. Bow your head. Nice. Racist Namaste. towards Asians. Mm. Hey. Got him. <laughs> uh, thanks to Tech Electronics for uh, making sure this studio is rocking and rolling. Uh, Gardner, you look like you were about to grab something just a second ago. Yeah, What's, I had uh, a little shoulder oh. discomfort. <laughs> Speaking of shoulder discomfort, best wishes to our uh, our buddy Dr. Ed from Hillside Animal Hospital. Won't be in tomorrow, so we're going to play dogs on film today with our friend J.C. Sabala, who's competing in the Helium Funniest in St. Louis contest. He'll play dogs on film with us second hour. Uh, we'll do fair or foul a little different today. We'll go old school. We'll throw some topics Dr. out Ed there. Dr. Ed is having sh- shoulder surgery, right? Yeah, yeah. he's getting... Uh, okay. He's you know, getting a Labrador left that shoulder. For people who weren't aware, I was like, "Don't, don't make it sound like Doctor Ed's in trouble." I know oh, he was my mistake. Shoulder surgery. Yeah, he's having a, a what is it? Torn labrum uh, repaired. Yep. So yeah, he talked about that. Okay. So he'll be back in action next week. But uh, big shout out to Hillside Animal Hospital for uh, bringing us Doctor Ed every single week. Lots to get to today. Uh, at the end of the show, we'll do it old school. We'll throw out some topics, Travis. Tommy and uh, Gardner will all uh, decide if they're fair or foul. So if you want to participate in that, be sure to just throw us some comments. And I think what we'll do is we'll start doing a huge prize on Friday or a way bigger f- prize on Friday. See if we can uh, bring our improv chops back to uh, back to uh, form. Oh Tommy, boy. Tommy, you're a graduate, and yeah. seems like it paid off. Yeah, you guys are gonna you're gonna be you're gonna be sorry. Oh boy, you uh, just can't yet, wait. Yet, Tommy, yet, I heard yeah. something last night that you would love. You would enjoy this. I had the opportunity to speak with some uh, professional showrunners really? in oh, the wow. industry. And they said specifically uh, that one thing they look for in new writers is our writers with an improv background. Mm-hmm. So for all you improv folks out there who are writing and also doing stand-up, uh, you have a leg up on a lot of the competition because a lot of showrunners are trying to fill their room with people who have, of course, extensive life experiences, but also people who have improv in their background. So keep and that dream going for all those who are in improv classes right now. That's a that's a huge asset to have when you go into a writer's room. Improv's really great too, just to have that skill set in general. Yeah. Yes. It's helped me in other aspects other than writing and performing. Like And, and you get to join a cult. It makes job interviews easier and just in it general does. makes talking to people easier. I don't know. It's That's, an excellent skill. I love it, it. It truly is. It, it really, it makes it, yeah, it communications easier. Because if you follow the yes. rules, you're not, as we step on each other's toes there, uh, communications easier because it's it's a flow. You're, you're not throwing bricks in front of the wheel, right? Yeah. Yeah, I've been, um, you know, Travis. I mean, when it comes to Thank improv, I'm the best on the yet. show. Certainly, I think my skills that I've displayed over the last three years having to carry Chris and other segments and generally most of our guests, that takes an improv background that people often don't think of. So uh, I think that's why I am who I am because of my amazing improv skills. Have you taken uh, any classes? I have. I took a a crash course with Rafe Williams. That's not a class. We've done a couple private things together (laughs) that were very extremely helpful. But no, he has not taken a class. But that's good improv. He got one on one. It was. That's good improv. Good job, Travis. Honest to God, shout out to Jason (laughs) Flam and uh, and and Rafe Williams, both who spent uh, did private stuff with us and worked with us. It was a lot of fun. I I will say that technically counts because Rafe's one of the best improvisers in the city. Oh, you'd pay. You he would be. uh, Yeah. You would get a private with him, and that's what we got. Yeah. Yeah, It would. That that'd be great. But yeah. 
So that's all. No, Travis has natural improbability from uh, all the lies he told his mother growing up. So, hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Well, that and generally being harassed by the cops, so you have to have the excuse oh, ready just in case Mark you this are down. trying to get out of a situation. Yeah. So it's kind of a life skill. It's kind of like surviving in St. Louis. You mm. have to be able to think quickly on your feet, otherwise you're going to end up dead. Uh, the uh, the great black sheep uh, wanted to uh, <laughs> commend you for your background change. He says, much better background, Travis. Great work, Fudge Round. <laughs> From the black I had sheep. a really cool... I have a really cool framed Rick and Morty poster, Ooh. and it's it's really dope. I got it here in NYC, and I wanted to put it on the wall. I was going to debut it next week, but I didn't realize that this new iPad stand was going to come through Amazon so quickly, so I didn't get a chance to prepare this morning. But yeah, I was trying to hang that up, and then I realized... It's like nine in the morning. I didn't want to hammer and have my neighbors <laughs> walk up to my door with could've, a shotgun. So could have got that iPad stand in hours, but uh, Cortez, Casio Cortez, you know, right? She could have had Boy, that right. You could have had that hey, right man, there. Hey man, don't be. That's the, she. She a queen of the city. Don't don't be. Dude, respectful. I bet. I bet. I bet she parts the sea when she walks around through there. Does she? Is she like a the biggest local legend you've ever uh, experienced? Like, cause she's there, right? Uh, I don't know if she's here at the moment. She may be yeah. in D.C. this week. But, no, she is. Um, I heard someone say a while ago, I guess this was not too long after she burst on the scene, after she won her election, like she needs to move towards the center in order to stretch her message. And I laugh because you've never been to Queens. <laughs> There's nothing moderate about Queens. They're liberal to the heart, and they should be for obvious reasons, very diverse area where she comes from. So the, the idea that she would be anything what she is, she's speaking like the people who where she comes from. So I think that's why she's such a phenomenon here, because she sounds like the residents that she represents. I thought she went to high school in Westchester. Probably. Okay. I don't know what Parents try to send you to a nice school. Mm -hmm. Do your best. And here you go again, throwing it back in her face. <laughs> That's like the life. argument where yeah. they were like, she dresses nice, so she doesn't count. That's yeah. the same thing you just did. Oh, I know. Trust me, I know, Tommy. All right. Uh, yeah, it's, it's very weird how we do that in society. Uh -huh. like, um, like certain people can be rich, uh, but others or who, who have something like that in their background, it's frowned upon. So it's, it's very odd. Like Trump can receive a $14 million loan to start his real estate empire. And then you have AOC, who who buys a brand new outfit from J.C. Penney, and all of a sudden she's now not of the middle class. And so believe it or not, coyotes. Yes, thank you. Specifically, need to be said. Coyotes. <laughs> it's almost like we're simple creatures who only get behind things that directly benefit us. Yeah. Almost. I love agendas. Uh, agendas are part of this show, and uh, part of the agenda is local news. Uh, Gardner has a great T-shirt design that By Jack has available right now, as we speak, on the By Jack website. Uh, Chesterfield County hashtag checks it. Mm -hmm. The T-shirt Gardner concepted and worked with John at uh, By Jack on. Uh, a famous local person who uh, sent Travis on his way, actually, Rennie Knott. Received the T-shirt, mm -hmm. rocking it out. Thanks to our friend Abby Larico for taking it to him. Gardner, I'm gonna let you uh, let you tell us all about it, man. This, no, what's it mean to you? I'm just uh, very happy that Rennie got his, because uh, I know the first time I had met Abby, that I was wearing that shirt and she was excited to see it because she was like, "I need this for Rennie. He's Mr. West County." And they're we, in on the joke, right? Yeah, they understand. It'd be way funnier if they didn't. Well, and then and Abby, I think, even tweeted yesterday to make sure that she's like, yeah. not a political thing. Yeah, it's just just having fun. Yeah, she used the word dope. And so if Rennie's going to have fun, someone tell Rennie, someone needs to tell Rennie, do we not have a buy Jack hashtag or Twitter handle? He tagged the wrong shirt company, actually, oh. <laughs> and then deleted it and oh. put it back up. So I, uh, I quote tweeted it with uh, the proper handles. It's all good. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. Uh, Rennie was at least sporting the shirt yesterday. Of course. I he think was that's sporting a great the shirt, way. and that's so cool. Really yeah. appreciate his support. Rennie's such a good guy. What a great human being. And I honestly don't mean that just because he interviewed me for his show, and that was I think an incredibly wise I mean. decision for his journalism resume. 
You mean that but interview where you uh, didn't mention Brenny is a yeah, very genuine, you. nice person. Yeah. So, you know, no, I get that's... interviewed a lot. I, I've been interviewed on Access Hollywood, Extra, Entertainment Tonight, and these interviews are often stiff and they, they, they're kind of routine, but Rennie truly got to the heart of what I was trying to say, and I appreciate him taking the time out of his schedule to make that happen. Travis seems well-rested. This is the Travis I like, where he's just an asshole the whole time, but he's not being... Well, he's serious. Never mind. It doesn't count if you walked in the bathroom. That's that's not an inter- that, I meant background. Oh, I man. messed it up. I, I lose. Yeah. Turn his mic off, Gardner. Yep. He's this struggling. Yeah. Improv. Tell me he's struggling today. <laughs> 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 hey, do you have some Jose Cuervo? What's going on over there, Tom? No, I... What's going on over there, Pebbles? I didn't get to bed till late. I had a weird night. All right, so. Tasty oh, Cakes. Does it ever just... Tommy, are you night? still mad at me, by the way, from yesterday? No. Nah. That's fine. Are you still Tommy, mad at me like from like 11 person. years yeah, ago, I Travis? Like I was atta- no, I, like I thought I was attacking his father. I wasn't attacking your what? father, your family members. Uh, I would imagine know. that your family members who support the Cardinals. Look, you'd, I, get, really you'd get a Facebook them. DM if you were attacking his father for real. Hey, t- Tommy 3 doesn't take up for Tommy 2. Tommy 2 handles his own business. Yeah. He, <laughs> you got a guy who worked the door at the Creepy Crawl for my, a decade. <laughs> I'm not messing with that. My, my dad, he bought us matching. Can I talk about this? The wallets? Yeah, Absolutely the wallets. Absolutely, you can. My, I'm, I'm just going to take a break. Go ahead. My dad bought us matching wallets. Uh, do you have a visual? Yeah, I do. I'm trying to get it out of my pocket, but I can't. <laughs> uh, Master improviser, Tommy. They say, uh, bad motherfucker on him. <laughs> hey, it's from Pulp Fiction. Yeah. Hold on. I'll zoom in on you, okay, Tommy? So, is this one? Wait, we have the capabilities? Yeah. You son of a... We've done this oh. before, Chris. Damn it. I love the close-ups. Look at that. This is what we've done. Like this that. is what we've That's worked hard cool. for. So this is what we're sponsored for. He 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 uh he bought us the he bought me and himself those and I kind of have to use it because uh, it's cool. Uh, so that's great. It's a good wallet. Also, my other one, my ID fell out of it, so I was like, ah, I guess I should probably get a new one. Yeah. No. So. Just okay. But yeah. were you offended yesterday? Did you think I was attacking your family? No, I just thought you were wrong. He thinks you're a he thinks you're a paper tiger, Travis. Oh, you're all okay. you're all That's... you're all barking no bite though, so I know. Catfish Terrell's what well, Tommy calls. Physically it. fight people. <laughs> yeah. That's probably a good <laughs> idea. Yeah. 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 Tommy, I think yeah. be wise what I mean what I mean by all bark and no bite people in the faces because they love the blues. <laughs> when I, what I mean by saying you're all bark and no bite is you were like, Well then we need to support the art scene and blah 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 blah. And you're not gonna do that. You're not gonna retweet. You're not gonna. He ret- won't retweet his own show. Yeah, you're not gonna do what you should do to support your community. You're Travis Terrell. <laughs> From the mouths of babes, you son of a bitch. Take that. Oh. Oh. I am oh. the most community involved individual. In no, this you're not. <laughs> no, you're not. Look at you. Absolutely. <laughs> to be fair, he's said he's the most community. You're involved in individual. New York <laughs> saying that. You're saying that from New York. Oh. See, that's the thing. That's your problem with you, St. Louis folks. Oh God! You guys just think everything. Here we every, go. Everything, is only, everything guys... is only relevant if it's within the the ninety seven municipalities that comprise St. Louis. I don't give a like, fuck about St. Louis. I just know St. you're St. Louis, no you're a, like. I, I, this started Tom, with Tommy. Tra- you opened that tra- door. Yeah. Yeah. Tommy, you yeah. opened yeah. the door when you said you're saying that from New York. That's your fault, Tommy. Welcome back. And also, this started with Travis trying to reach out to mend a fence, and it ended with Travis sucking you back into his mind game. Because you are white, Travis. You are black Tommy, <laughs> and you're both stubborn as dumb as shit. That's why. Oh, we can't, e- can't even like reach out. We can't even have a normal conversation of apologies and mending fences the right way because we're so fucked up. That's why. And hang on. <laughs> Sorry, Mom. And hang on. Yeah. Sorry, Aunt Chris. <laughs> Good morning, Walnuts. I forgot to say that. Oh, I just realized man. it. We got our first Ooh. Walnut added to a Twitter profile yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to... I got to get the Twitter handle on that, but... uh. That was really funny. Uh, somebody has uh, added Walnut, and Jamie Moyer's fancy foyer couldn't be happier. <laughs> last uh, last night, I, I got a message on Tinder from a girl. and she oh, was, stop it. Uh, hold on, it gets bad. Uh, it turns, hold on, it gets there's bad. nothing good for me in it. <laughs> yeah, it's, okay, we're listening. It gets real hold bad. Hold on, it gets bad. Like the, so she sends oh, me, okay, yeah. Sends, right. She sends me a message. She's like, hey, you look like Pete Davidson, which, first of all, no, I don't. Uh, no, but I don't. was, yeah. 
So I was like, all right, cool, though, but because you clearly like him or you wouldn't have said it. So we're talking back and forth, and I go, and I go to uh, meet up with her. Not, like, in a weird way, but, like, I go to meet up with her, and then we're talking, and then she she uh, she goes, hey, by the way, can you not tell anybody we met? And I go, well, why? And she goes, well, I'd be embarrassed if anybody found out that uh, I, I went out with you. So that's what happened to me last night. What? I thought that would be funnier. I'm sorry. Funny, but it's like that's very mean of her. Nah. Look Why would she can say you send that? Me a, I'm not even trying I to wanna, be funny. I want to see this broad. Send me a picture of her. Yeah. 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 I'm calling her a broad. Yeah. She's talking to it, me like that. Like, I get the just funny part. I'm not going to blow it? her up. I'm not going to put her on blast. But I now, just want to see a picture of her. Because this Tommy, is, yeah. what that was is that we were all mad at this girl. That's oh, what that right. was. Yeah, no, it's cool. Yeah, we're not mad Black, at you. Black we're not sheep laughing says, at you. That's kind of a very rude thing to say. Yeah, why would you? In general. That's well, I mean, don't, then get the F off Tinder then. Yeah, I mean, don't. That's ridiculous. Is she catfish, Chris? Is that oh, a real she's profile? Ni- she's 19. It may be a fake profile. It's not fake. I met her. Okay. Oh, it's you met her? Profile. Yeah, that's how we. Oh, that's, okay. We went out and she you told me that in person. You physically met her before? Yeah, last night. She told me that in person. Think. That's interesting. Think, I mean, it, you need to, you think need in the to vein stop of dating people who can't drink legally. <laughs> <laughs> that's probably a good yeah. idea. That's that's your okay, number one there. thing. That's, yeah, that's probably a good idea. That's, Travis, uh, this yeah, young you lady. Stop dating people who were born in 2002. Yeah. <laughs> Travis, also, this young lady would have been, uh, she would have been bellied up at Buka on the landing in the uh, early to mid 2000s. Uh, one of these types. Yeah. Uh, send me the picture anyway. So, uh, she's 19. I'm definitely going to dog her out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Don't be rude right. to my boy, Tommy. Don't do that. Okay, okay, you know what? I'm not even blaming it on age. I'm going to be honest with you. That's just rude. You don't say that to yeah. me. I don't care how old you are. Like at I, 19, you know that's a rude thing to say. Like yes, that's not an immaturity thing. That's she's a gonna you being have, a bitch. Thing. She's going to have three kids by two different guys in the next year, I and, a, year and a half. It like weird. It's, it's, it like what an image is she trying to uphold to where like she That's says, my thing. Yeah. Like, who who yeah, is this? Who one, that's one, one of her root show. I'm on a podcast. See, now look, Tommy, I have time on my hands these days. Now I'm yeah. mad. And now when I get mad, oh boy. things get ugly because I have agendas oh. and I will further them how I see fit. Mm. I want to know who she is. Nah. I'm I definitely will, not telling you. I will take your phone out of your tiny Listen, hands. She is going to be getting teamed She's by fine. two salesmen from a Harley dealership Chris. in her near <laughs> future. Do not. Yeah, cool. She's got it bad enough. <laughs> like this is not Jesus Christ. This, she, listen, <laughs> this girl, this girl's aspirations do not fall much. For, you're fine. It, we, she's done I enough. Got the <laughs> Oh boy! Uh, in good news, uh, the Sean video we saw yesterday up to twenty-eight thousand views <laughs> on Twitter. <laughs> and it just got retweeted again. So big shout out to. Uh, you know Sean. what I hate, huh. especially about the algorithms in both Twitter and Facebook. Like as soon as it gets that many views, it just ends up in your timeline at the most random parts of your day. <laughs> and nothing like checking on your dear old aunt and seeing how your little sissies are doing. Than seeing Sean's half naked body mm-hmm. in the middle of your Facebook feed. That's so a true thank gyration. You, thank you all for that. That's a real gyration, too. Like, how yeah. else would we describe that? He took me to the grocery store last Is night. Is it gyration? Is gyration the word we want to use? Well, I mean, it's either that or like just tremors. The, the embodiment of uh, the car sales. The man, the man enjoys dancing. Technically, it's the shakes if he hasn't been drinking. Mm-hmm. Well, that's not an mm-hmm. issue. Mm-hmm. That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> He's always drinking. That, in, that image of him looks I bought, like a toddler trying to use a urinal. That's from the Black Sheep. <laughs> I bought him a drink yesterday at the bar in celebration because I couldn't buy the drink for myself. Mm. What were you celebrating? What you celebrate? Yesterday was six years of sobriety. Nice. Congratulations, my friend. So I'm like, I'm going to buy an alcoholic drink for Sean. <laughs> for Sean. Someone is going to appreciate That's... it at least. Six years of sobriety. Yeah. Man, are you, uh, are you happy with the trajectory it's taken you? Yeah, no. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> He's honest. Probably need, to, probably need some medication. Yesterday, uh, <laughs> we were in line at a deli, and he, he just goes, it's my six-year anniversary. And I go, of what? And he goes, of being sober. I go, how does that make you feel? And he went, eh. <laughs> so. 
I was trying to figure out how I was supposed to do something. Mm. And I'm like. Do you get a chip? Oh, you don't do that. I don't do that. Yeah. I was like. He did get chips. Chris, give him a chip. Give him like a Dorito. He got, he got Pringles. I got Pringles. He got Pringles. He did in the get office. Pringles. Cheddar oh, nice. cheese Pringles. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, nice. That's cool. I always go back and forth. Congratulations. Between. Seriously, though. Thank that's you. That's really. I it's admirable. I, I don't want to brush over it because I think we all know some people indirectly or directly in our lives who have had to go through something similar to what mm-hmm. Gardner went through and. It's not easy, and I don't think six years is anything to snuff at. I think that's incredibly impressive, and I congratulate you on your journey. I would imagine that hasn't been an easy six years, but here you are alive, and I'm so happy that you are because you're an amazing human being. Oh, see, this is how you talk to each other. This is how you talk. Tommy, eat a dick. (laughs) (laughs) That's also (laughs) how you talk to each other. Thank you, uh, Travis. Do you, eat do you feel some Travis? There it is. It's been a minute. It's been a minute. Uh, Tommy, uh, how's, how's that, that conversation going? That's... I'm going to make you put the phone down. <laughs> my God, I'm going to lose my mind. Yep. Uh, Gardner, you, sir, uh-huh. community and being sober when you run into other people? Do I what? Community. Do you find it in other people that are sober? Yeah, in some, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Anybody annoy you? Uh, no, not really. I have a good friend who's actually opening a restaurant here soon in the Grove who joined me not too long after that. We used to hang out quite a bit. It's sleeping parks. Ah, uh, you used to. I mean, he used to have to have a sh- two shots of Jameson in the morning so he didn't, you know, shake. Wow. And uh, that's who I was partying with. That's who I was around. Those were my, those still are my friends. But uh, you, Tommy. He took it. Took him two stints at rehab, rehab. to get it to get it to stick. Yeah. Um, first time it didn't work. Second time it did. And he's still, I saw him the other day. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's, uh, there's a few other people on that. I don't want to say their names because yeah. they're more prominent in the community, but they're, we, we trade stories. There, right. There's the old quote unquote war stories mm-hmm. of whatever. Right. Well, it's interesting to me and Travis and Tommy, you guys pay attention to this. I know Tommy listens to WTF with Mark Marin quite a bit who's a big sobriety advocate he does the meetings all that stuff but it's almost where it's like uh if you if you do drink and all that when you look ahead at the people who are successful in their 50s and 60s and they're like yeah i had to kick it got sober around uh, 41 or yeah. whatever and then it's just like oh and you're a giant star it almost sometimes feel like feels like that's the only way to ascend to the complete top level, which is totally not true. More people drink and are successful than don't, I would say, I think mm-hmm. percentage-wise. But a giant number of creative folks, and it probably lends uh, creativity, a creative mind lends itself to substance abuse, I would think, as well. Hey, you're trying. All of my heroes. It generally relaxes yeah. you. I mean, yeah. in the, I, I think I because think uh, Nikki Glazer, she, she didn't have an issue with drinking. She just made it a point to not drink because she knew she was on the road a lot and she did a ton of traveling and i think she may have witnessed how it affect other comedians over a long term so i think it's a decision that creatives take into well how much of my daily life is going to be alcohol or some other substance and when you are writing or you're coming up with stand up and you look up and you've got fast food all over the place and a couple beers here and there you have to ask yourself all right, if I'm going to be able to try to maintain this this for an extended period of time, how much am I going to allow? So as an artist, as a professional screenwriter, I (laughs) try to try to live a healthy lifestyle. There's fruit generally around. There's the occasional tequila. Uh, There's some, you know, some other type of uh, aspirins. But aside from that, you just have to know who you are within yourself. Yeah. So for all you creatives out there who are going through it, you're not alone. And remember, if you need a shoulder to cry on, you can follow Black to the Future because oh today God. he is going unprotected. Oh, run wow. on! Breaking I'm news. Sure that's Twitter not the outrage. Run on! What happened? Did you did the company you hired clean everything? Mm-hmm. No. Uh, <laughs> the, the fellowship uh, is technically over. Okay. Uh, there are still some events that I'll be attending over the next few weeks that are in regards to Sesame Street, but the actual sessions and, and things of that nature completed late last night. And so I'll be working the next two weeks on my final draft that I'll have to present to the lovely executives at Sesame Street here in a couple of weeks. Uh, so uh, it's, it's back to the world of, uh, 
of, of Twitter as a free man. With that being said, if any of you uh, try to ruin me or my career, understand that I come from the school of Gartner. Oh, and wow. that if, if, if you think just bringing me down is the end of that story, <laughs> oh, buddy, I will wait in the tall grass and I will strike. I will strike. Oh, wow. It's very impressive. Don't say anything. Full screen. Hold on. It takes a second. I'll strike. Oh, my God. I couldn't get over there in time. Oh, man. I was actually scared. Was I was scared for a moment. Yeah. I was staring I was, at the screen. I was waiting for you to go, I will strike that ass. <laughs> you missed a good opportunity. Uh, oh, Steve, a really good opportunity. Hold on. Hold on. Plus, I will strike. Steve in Des Moines. I'll strike that ass. There you go. Our good friend Steve in Des Moines says it's admirable that you can sit through the show every day and not drink. <laughs> I wholeheartedly agree with you, Steve. Travis does drink, so yeah, Steve, I mean that does happen. <laughs> yeah, some, of us, some of us are we use doing Pokemon. A movie thing next hour? Yeah, we are going to do uh, dogs and film next hour. Okay, um, because I I know we're coming up to the top of the hour, but I wanted to ask you guys this because uh, the really cool thing about working with Sesame Street. Um, and that I haven't personally had to experience in a ton of the previous opportunities I've had in my life, whether it would be with jobs at a restaurant or working down at the Capitol in Missouri, is that um, there are people who look like me uh, that are at Sesame Street, a lot of us that look like me and that come from minority backgrounds. And I'm curious, uh, because we talk about it a lot, about being in black spaces or brown spaces or spaces where people look like you and they do what you do for a living. I'm curious for you guys, what is a space that you are uncomfortable in? Can you recall the last time you were in a place or a space where you were in the minority? Um, like hanging out or just passing through? I guess that's what I'll do. Maybe hanging it. out. Just in a, in a, in a, maybe it's, it's somewhat of maybe of a social a setting trap. or just maybe even a work setting. This is a trap. I'm trying to think here, here and here's why and I'm, I'm explaining a little bit about myself here yeah. i tend to adapt to wherever i may be um just to try to make myself feel comfortable and not i won't necessarily go into a situation looking to ruffle feathers if it's something mm -hmm. that i'm uncomfortable with it may be more along the lines of what can i do to fit in here for a while until i'm gone so nothing sticks out immediately. Um, I'd have to think on. I mean, I can tell. I'll go back a few years. This is when drinking was part of it. Oh, walking into a bar called Luckett's on Del Mar, um, mm -hmm. which is it's an all black bar. And once again, my adaptation was OK, because you're get, I'm getting start rapping. I'm, I'm getting looks for a moment. You go to the sure. Jeep, and I recommend this for anyone that finds himself in this situation. Um, you go to the jukebox. You're putting in money. They're wondering what white boy is going to play. And I played Al Green because <laughs> there were older black men in there. And I sat down at the bar and ordered a drink. So that's how I adapted to that. Was I uncomfortable for a moment? Yeah. But I also knew my audience for a moment as well and tried to adapt to that. So I can think of that just being uncomfortable there for a second. But then I was trying to say, hey, we can all sit here and have drinks. We're all just trying right. to get drunk. We all have the same <laughs> goal. We're all trying. We might be different religions, but we're all trying to get to that Valhalla. And we can take oh, different God. routes to get there. But oh, you know man. what? We can do it together. We uh, can do it together. Other than here every morning, Tommy, what about you? I'm comfortable everywhere. I mm -hmm. think you got to be if you're going to go up on stage. I mean... Kind of just have to go. I don't know. I bet. Well, not necessarily comfortable everywhere, but when was the last time you were in a space where you were the minority? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's like, have I you mean, gone to St. Louis? That's event? not that's I, crazy. Have you done something to that, like something where you're your kind or you're the group well, of people that you represent or here. you're outnumbered? Here, here, here's the thing. The, oh, my local watering hole, on any particular moment in there, I can be the minority. Gotcha. That's part of the reason I like going there is because there's so many different types of people. That includes socioeconomics, yeah. basic economics, that, in, that includes gay, straight, 
Like I could be outnumbered five to one, gay straight, Say at what? any moment in time in there, yeah. or black white. Yeah, in the in the same. So that's part of why I like going there. We're a bad audience for this. Like literally, between the two of us, we both live in a corridor of the most diverse place you could possibly live in, in in the middle of Missouri, anywhere really. I mean, if you're talking ethnicity, I live in Tower Grove. There's yeah. all kinds of of different countries and and everything. Uh, represented on South Grand, and then just even coming to Grand Center where it's an arts district, I think I'm bad about this. Cause maybe it's flipped with me if I go into like a Walmart in a rural area. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I remember these people. Like I uh, like that's something that I'll notice. But I don't know. I, I think we get a really good mix of um, being around just yeah, a lot of a lot I, of diversity. And here. Travis, I get more uncomfortable at times going to visit not. my parents. Now. Right. Yeah. Like it's and not what seeing, you're used to. And, and like. I don't know all the people that are their neighbors now, like I used to growing up, but it's not what, what it was when I was growing up. And so I don't, and I, I get uncomfortable with, look, there's a guy two houses down that's got a bleeping Confederate flag in his garage. Mm -hmm. And every time <clears throat> I go by there, I just shake my head and I ask my mom, like, does anyone say, I mean, this is, I mean, it, it bothers me. Like that, like I can get uncomfortable out there where I grew up. Mm-hmm. No, um, that see that yeah, that's why I, it's confusing that. But that I think a part of that is in. adapting to where I live now and with the culture that I've grown up or not grown up in, but where I've grown accustomed to. Yeah, I'm going on almost 20 years of either living in Columbia, Missouri, which Travis, I mean, speak if you're in a university town, especially Columbia, mm -hmm. I'm super diverse at least where I was at and around. No, those are no, I I think I, I think those, I mean, not to be funny when I say this, but those are those are white spaces, yeah. as you're describing. Like even Columbia, Columbia is predominantly white. Columbia is close to 85 percent white. Like even in yes, the university, there, that's not the same. There. Though there's a major university there, but even at the University of Missouri, there's only out of the 30,000 students that attend the University of Missouri, <laughs> it's six and a half percent are African American. So that's a white space. That's what I mean. Like I, they're, they're, how see. often are you in a space where? where people don't necessarily yeah. look like you. And it's not a matter of comfort. I'm not necessarily specifically speaking of comfort because it just, you know, that's just the math in some equations. What I was getting to is that a lot of, a lot of people in whatever their career, whether it's politics, entertainment, comedy, they're generally going to be the only black or brown person, the only uh -huh. woman there. So you're that's talking generally how it works. So I'm curious if as you're to in the have 10%. you guys ever been in a setting where you are the only white male or you're the only sure. straight person or you know that's what i meant i don't I, think i've ever worked in that setting go ahead Tom. i have an answer i was in the central west end a few weeks nope. ago and i was at a dollar tree and i think i might have been the only white person in there yeah and that's that's the most recent one i can think of and like oh, i mean the, that, there's a gas yeah, station, gas station yeah, yeah, like, i mean you know, but but that's like but that's like Restaurants, things like that, but no, not in a professional setting. To your to your question, no. it doesn't really yeah. happen. And that was the only thing right. I, I think, because we we often talk about like um, you'll see entertainers, black entertainers, or, or even as they call it, the gay mafia in Hollywood. People ask why do minorities gravitate to their groups in these type of settings, and and I think you you it was a moment last night where we all realized we have been so conditioned to the point where we've always worked in spaces where we're, we were always the only one um, that it's it's almost weird how we react when we're in a group of like because it's unfamiliar to us no that that makes sense and i get it whenever so you're not talking about just mixed situations you're saying what right. personally the less than five percent in the room i get it mm -hmm. yeah, yeah I, I just can't think of I mean, socially, many times, and that and that doesn't bother me. But um, yeah, professionally, no, no, really. Yeah, I don't think I've had that, really. So I don't know. No, okay. I was just yeah. curious. I was yeah, just I'm, curious. I'm, I'm, I'm I, I'm trying to think. Pose a it's a question to my. Say what, Tommy? It's a good thing to think about, though. Too. Yeah, I mean, yeah, just it, because there it, are differences. I, I mean, look like, how. I mean, just. I mean, to answer your question and see what life is like for me. I mean. Look how hard I had to try to think to find that, right? I mean, that maybe explains some of it to begin with right, right. there. It's just not even having the answer right away kind of explains some of that, I think. Now, how much is, uh, how much is truly different 
and then how much is, I mean, just like anything else, how much do you feel uh, projection plays into that? Or does it at all? Like, have you ever done that? I'll do that where I'm like, oh, these people think a certain thing about me. And then you talk to them for a second. And they're like, oh, no, they're, they look at me just the same as anyone else. Does that ever come into play? I, I do. I think there are times like I can speak to, I can speak to uh, college specifically where I'm freezing. I'll enter it later. I'll, I'll, I don't because I want to be clear when I make mm -hmm. it. Um, so we can go to break. I just realized we're over ten. Yeah. Oh, we're we're, we're all good. Uh, it's uh, we are live. We're at Midcoast Studio in Grand Center in St. Louis. We got Tommy the intern. The great Travis Terrell in Brooklyn and Chris Gardner. My name is Kristen. We'll take a break. Be back on the other side at 915. JC Sabalas joining us. Keep it here, guys. It's We Are Live. Ooh.